everyone, Kathy here and welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited to introduce you to Selamawit Tesfawe, a local coffee shop owner from Monkesco, New York. Selamawit is also known as Mimi. Mimi opened a coffee shop downtown Monkesco about a year and a half ago. A business is doing really well even in the midst of COVID-19 and the restrictions mandated on small businesses. Today, her little coffee shop has become a must-go-to for all the people living or working in the area. Today's interview will sound quite odd at first as you will hear a lot of noise in the background. This interview took place in Mimi's coffee shop. So enjoy! Good afternoon, Mimi. Thank you so much for your time and for accepting to answer our questions today. Thank you for choosing me. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you don't mind. I brought along one of your good customers, Paul, and he would is he's actually dying to ask you a few questions. Right. Easy ones, don't worry. No problem. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm more or less the, the technical name. contact. Here. Got it. You know, if I didn't have technical expertise, I'd be left at home. <laughs> and also, Paul is fascinated I love coffee by coffee. Too. Beans. I, love, I really love. Thank I'm really you. excited that this place started and it's doing well. I really love it. Yeah, it's really, really yeah. interesting. Okay. So first of all, can you please tell us a little bit more about yeah. yourself, yes. yeah. where you come from, how did you arrive in Monkisco, etc. Yes. Sure. So I was born and raised in Ethiopia. Uh -huh. I came here when I was 16 okay. in 95. Uh, My sister, who was a few years older than me, was already here. She was babysitting in Katona, so when I decided to come, she uh, rented an apartment in Mount Kisco. Okay. So that's how we end up in Mount Kisco. Uh, so I've been here since 95. I lived here longer than I lived in Ethiopia. So I feel like this is my home now. And um, yeah, that's how we end up in Mount Kisco. That's amazing. Thank you. Well, we're not from here either, so welcome to you. But <laughs> yes. So are you connected to the Ethiopian? Yes. So Lali Bella is an Ethiopian restaurant, which is two doors down, that I opened uh, almost 11 years ago. Uh, so that was actually another chance, a risk I took, because there's not many Ethiopian restaurants in Westchester. Uh, some people know about Ethiopian food, but majority didn't. And when I decided to open um, the restaurant, actually, my first love of business was a uh, coffee shop. So then. Uh, dove into the restaurant and kind of figure out what works, what doesn't, and then, um, but yes, the restaurant is mine too. So my question maybe is that you, you came here, you took a big risk. So there's another coffee shop on this block, we won't mention, yes. but it's a well-known chain. But you came here, you, you knew that was there. I did. And you felt confident that you could be better. Yes. And that's what I'm really interested to know, why you felt, uh -huh. what you felt that that other place didn't have that you could provide. Okay. So I just want to say forgive the noise because we are in the <laughs> coffee shop and there's a lot of noise in the back. But I always thought that growing up in Ethiopia, it's morning to night people drink coffee in Ethiopia. It's a big part of the, the tradition, big part of people's day. And since I've been here, I never had a good cup of coffee especially for my neighbors. Yes. They are very popular, they're very well known, but I never really thought they have a good quality coffee. And I want people to have the chance and the opportunity to get up in the morning. You can go to different places in Westchester and get a good cup of coffee, but I didn't think there was one in Mount Pisco. Yes, I was very intimidated, and a lot of people did think I was out of my mind to be able to open this and compete, uh, but I did, feel like, if anything, I would say I tried it. Uh, without going too much into it, coffee shop was my first love of business. So I always have it in the back of my mind and I always thought Monkey School would be a great place for it. Uh, it's a big town, uh, the community is very supportive. It, it was a big chance and a big risk and I knew that I had to do 100% better than them. The decor, the customer service, the quality of coffee. I had to outdo myself and make sure I have a good product to offer to people. Yeah. 
So you weren't just, it wasn't just a coffee, but you knew you had good coffee and you did it, there's no question, hands down, but you also knew you had the, the experience as well. Yes, the environment, which the environment, atmosphere. Yes. Which was a which, bit gutsy. Yeah. Uh, it, you have, but it, looking yeah. back on it. Yes, uh, and that's why I always thought too, when I saw this space open up, I did get a pushback for people telling me, oh, you're all the way in the back, it's going to be hard for people to find you. But I thought, if I have this big space, I can be creative, I can make it homey, comfortable. Um, you know, the mismatch, just I took idea from a lot of different places I've been to and I kind of had it in my head, but once I put it out, I felt like it was going to be a good space for people to come, whether meeting friends or working or uh, just coming in for a few minutes to grab a cup of coffee and go. You know, um, Mimi, I, I'm from France and for us coffee is not just drinking the coffee, it's sitting down, taking the time, talking to people and so forth and that's exactly what you're bringing them, yes. you're bringing them a community level. Yes. Now, who is your market? Are you looking for students or elderly or uh, uh, who is your market? So I really market it towards people that are that live in the community, people also that works in the area. I want to make it comfortable for young kids to come in and, and sit and do their homework. But my market really was stay-at-home moms. Okay. Um, just people in general that is either out working and they have to meet other people or out and about and they need to grab a cup of coffee. So I really, especially now that we've been here a little longer, I noticed we get a lot of younger people, whether it's for the food or for the drink. So I would say anywhere between um, five-year-old to 95-year-old. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have a 16-year-old. and we have a strange, We have a strange phenomenon with this. We have a 16-year-old girl and she goes to the other place. Yes. And there's no way I would be sitting in the other place with her while she's there with her friends because it's yippy yappy yep, yep, right? Yes. And normal stuff, but yes. with, with, when she also comes here yes. um, a lot and comes with me, and stuff, but she changes when she comes here. Yeah. It's you like know? way more sophisticated. She, she, she doesn't even do it on purpose. It's, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, really, wow, really interesting. interesting. <laughs> it yeah. is really, that's really funny. interesting. Uh, yeah, we do get a lot of the kids that, you know, they will either be with their group of friends. And I, it really, to me, it's not, um, it's not a competition. Yes. I think we yeah. can absolutely coexist. It's what you prefer, what anybody you know prefers to have. And you're obviously offering something different. So is your favorite coffee Ethiopian coffee or is that? Uh, I wish I could say that, but I would be lying <laughs> to you. But I've tried many different coffee. I think it really, uh, obviously Ethiopian coffee, a lot of people like, and depending on which region it comes from, but it really has a lot to do how it's roasted also. I think that's what gives it the end flavor and taste. So I like like uh, medium roast coffees. There's a lot of uh, South American coffees that I really like. Kenyan coffee is really good. It's very hard to get. Ethiopian so in coffee. Ethiopia, is the coffee, it's, it's, it's this format or is it espresso or is it everything? Or so no, actually coffee in Ethiopia is drank in a small cup. Um, I'll tell you a story. When my mom came here and she sees people walking around and she, my mom said, what is the people always walk around with that? And I said, it's coffee. And she couldn't believe it. Yeah. She said, in that big thing, that's coffee. It's coffee. <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah. You know? So it is more like espresso and maybe a little similar to Turkish or Greek coffee. So we drink it in a small cup and if coffee in Ethiopia is beginning to the end. It can last for an hour and a half. You know, they have the beans, they yeah. wash it. Uh, they you sit there and they roast the coffee. They have a lot of time, so they can do all that. <laughs> oh, so they roast the coffee before Beef, right oh, before it's be uh, super fresh. It really is. Yes. I saw on your yeah. YouTube video that you had a coffee tree growing up. Yes. Tell us about this. That's sure. an amazing story. So I my I was born and raised in the capital. Uh, my grandmother, who lived in the countryside, when school closes, we always go and spend a couple months with her. And she had a, a few coffee trees. That's for the home. You know, we will go in the back and take the, the coffees down, and they come. They have like a shell, okay. the coffee um, beans. They're covered with this shell, and it's like jelly-like the inside. It like when you once you split it open, and you just like love eating that. The inside is a little bit sweet, so you know. And then you have to dry it, and you do the whole process. But that was always my fun memory of coffee in Ethiopia. Yeah, it, it, this is really yeah. amazing. I never That's thought so back then I would 
end up owning a coffee shop. But it is really interesting. I mean, France is <laughs> similar, but it's the roasting is not in. The yeah, we import coffee and then we roast it and so forth, but okay. we don't uh, we don't, you don't grow, grow coffee. coffee. Yeah, no. So, a lot of people in Ethiopia um, grow their own coffee, and you know, of course, it's a big um, business for Ethiopia. That, but within the, the neighborhood, will have a coffee tree here and there, and they, you know, use it for themselves. They'll share it with their neighbors. Definitely the countryside does that a lot more, the capital, but that's how they drink coffee in Ethiopia. My husband, who's from here, I took him there a few years ago, and I asked him one morning, I said, oh, you, we're gonna have coffee, and he said, sure. So it's like 20 minutes goes by, and, and, and half an hour, he goes, where's the coffee? I was like, they're working on it, because the whole process really <laughs> takes, at least by the time you get your cup of coffee, which comes in that, and then he was like, so he waited that long, and he goes, really, that's it? I said, no, they'll refill you a couple times, but. I bet that was the freshest it. cup of coffee he's absolutely. ever had. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, if someday you go to Massachusetts, in the Berkshire, there is a coffee shop. It's a little bit like yours. He is passionate about it, and same like you. Like he has this environment, the beautiful that we actually love. And every time we go to the Berkshire, yeah, we go over there. But that's the same thing. You, you I think coffee is is a passion it more is. than a job. It's it not is. a job. It's, it's something not. that you it's actually I think love. You, a lot of people that work in a coffee shop, uh, they love coffee, they love the culture, they love the customer service. They're passionate about giving customers a good cup of coffee. Yeah. So Mimi, mm -hmm. I, we don't need to know your secret sauce or any trade <laughs> secrets, but how do you get the beans? You, you purchase them and bring them in, or yeah. do, you, do you have special contacts? Or yeah. what's, how does so you, how's your coffee so good? Oh. That's the question. <laughs> I think it has a lot to do with, with the company and with the roasters that we use. Uh, they just know how to source uh, a good quality of coffee. They work with the farmers, they're hands-on, and obviously it has to be a good quality of coffee for them to roast it and make it even better. But I think it's just the, my coffee, where I get it from, it's called Kana Culture, and okay. they're very well known. Okay. They're, they roast in Colorado, mm -hmm. and they don't own a coffee shop, but they have a lot of coffee shops they work with. Okay. So they consider this is their coffee shop because we're using their coffee. Mm -hmm. So they make sure our machine works well. They oh. have classes where all the, the workers can go and get trained to how to pull a really good espresso shot, uh, how to steam the milk. So they have very, very good support system. That's amazing. So, so it's your store, it's your business, but you're working in collaboration with, with, a, another with an coffee. expert. With a exactly. wholesaler. That to is amazing. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And to have my employees, like when we hire somebody new, they will go in um, once a week for four weeks, which they will train them and they will show them and explain about the coffee. They do coffee tasting once a month if you want to go and just taste all the new coffees that they have. Now, now you're talking about what's going on. Um, I'm going to talk about COVID-19. Now, you have been open and people are coming and I see a lot of people in this shop and yes. they're coming with masks and they're very comfortable coming to you. How did you survive during all this month? We see so many stores that are ready to close down and yeah. you, you're flourishing. Yeah, so it's gotten so much better. I think we're about three months into it. When I thought about closing, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. I said, even if I have to work by myself, which I end up doing a lot of the times because I didn't have enough business and I didn't have enough payroll budget. So I said, I'm gonna cut my hours. I'm gonna cut my option with the food and I will work by myself and stay open. And then I just make sure I have everything that people needed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, have, I use a company that comes in, uh, dis disinfects everything once a week, and whatever they use is supposed to last for 30 days. I have the hand wipes, sprays, constantly clean the counter because I didn't want anybody to come here and you know get yeah. sick. So I made sure I took extra steps to protect myself, my employees, and my customers. So now transitioning to your products, we've been talking about coffee, but I see that you have tea, you sell homemade cookies and scones and smoothies and, smoothies and so forth. So, so do you do you have a market for this or how do you advertise this? Because again, you are competing against the other coffee yes. shop who has a lot of sweets. Yes. So what do you provide that is actually different and yeah. better quality? Yeah. So first and foremost, I wanted to serve people something healthy uh, that's freshly made um, on a daily basis. Nothing comes to me that's already made. We cook everything uh, here and then I also use the kitchen for the restaurant to cook some of the things. Uh, so I just 
offer people something healthy, something fresh. And I figure, yes, it's a coffee shop, but since I have a space where people can sit, uh, whether they're working or meeting somebody else, I want to offer them something quick, you know, have something to eat with their coffee or tea. Uh, the smoothie is the same thing. We make it here every day to put something healthy to it. You know, I'm working on actually a veggie smoothie, but we have a lot of fruit smoothies that we make every day. Fresh veggies, fresh fruits. I have tea that I source from Serendipity in Long Island that's organic. We use a loose tea that we put, you know, the right amount in a tea bag and we steep it. And I, I love do use scones. Yes, I, so I use Newcastle scones, mix it in chapuqua, but the muffin, the croissant, the cookies, I make all that stuff here. So they're all freshly baked every day. Now, you also have poetry readings? And musicians. Yes. So tell yeah. us about that. So uh, the, the musician is uh, someone that lives locally, Art Nelson. He came here the same thing right after we opened. He told me that he was a musician and he puts it all together himself. He invites you know everyone and anyone, young, old, whoever, different instruments, singing. So we've done that last year, um, I think once a month. And then the poem reading is from Rytopia. I think they're in uh, Yokotona. Mm -hmm. And they will come in, they will sing, a read a, a poem. And that's what I really feel when I look around and I said, I can't believe I'm living my dream because that's really what I wanted to do is open a place where it's welcoming to community, young, old, and everyone. And the space seems to fit perfect for that. So it's actually an amazing transition here because my next question was about dreams and skills and how to combine the two. So now I created this podcast because I feel that so many people have a dream but not everyone gets to show it to the outside world. But you definitely were able to do that and you were lucky enough and adventurous enough and brave enough. So there's a lot of facets going to it. But can you please give some advice to our audience? We have 25 countries. Today we have our 25th country. Someone from Japan was listening this oh, morning. Wow. So it's amazing. You're going to have people yes. from all around the world. So people who will come to your shop, yeah. but people who would want to hear from you even though they cannot come. Yeah. What advice are you giving them? The first thing I would say is, is this. You have to do what you love and what you're really passionate about. And you have to be willing to work hard. Nothing is easy. Owning your own business, it's great, uh, but it's also very, very hard. Just believe in yourself. Know that if you are able to do what you wanted to do, you're willing to put all the work that it needs. You're willing to spend all your time and your energy to do what you love to do. Uh, I thought about opening this coffee shop for 15 years. And it didn't happen for me for 15 years, but I never gave it up. It was not I the always, right time. It was not the right time. Um, and sometimes it feels like they will never be the right time. I think you will never have enough money. It will never be the right time. Yeah. There will be so many things that would stop you, but I think you just have to believe in yourself. Say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to work hard to make it happen. So when I thought about opening a coffee shop in Westchester, which is 15 years ago, I didn't have a penny to my name, but I had a big dream, and I always wanted to do it. And one of my biggest dreams also was to work for myself. But uh, anyway, so to go back to your question, I think it's just doing what you really love to do. And no matter how long you're doing it or how hard it is, that you won't give up. And I think I just never gave up on my dream. When this coffee shop, when I found the space and I started applying for a loan, I went back to my business plan and it was, we were looking at it and it was 10 years had passed. I didn't really have to change much, but I just have to change the date. The business plan itself was the same. Yeah. Because yeah. the dream was the it's, same. It was the same. That yeah. is, that is yeah. really inspiring. Yeah. I don't come from money. So I got turned down a lot. And then I started to reach out to people that I know, you know, my family, friends. And so I borrowed from everyone and I was so grateful that people trusted me enough to say, okay, you'll make it happen and you'll well, courage. Yeah. yeah. That so, is, I, you really and have And that gives you even more unreal. of the drive too because you say, right now, yeah. I can't let all these people down, so I have to. Yeah. It's yeah. really, really inspiring. Yeah. It really is. I have one last question. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> so you mentioned about the poetry reading uh -huh. and, the, uh, and the music. That is something that 
we as customers and residents of Mount Kisco are super excited about because I can't tell you how many times we sat at home on a Friday evening and just say, wouldn't it be nice to go somewhere? And so how would I know when that's going to happen? So we do put it on our social media. We have plenty of flyers that we put in the stores so that people can see it. Not everybody wants to go out to dinner on a Friday mm -hmm. night or on a Saturday night. But if you have a reason to go somewhere, to grab a cup of coffee and sit and listen to you know people playing music and be a part of a community that is important. exactly yeah and I hear it from a lot of people saying this is perfect this is all we just needed uh, to come out and listen to music see our community see our neighbors what young people old people everybody shows up uh, the other thing I love to do is as you can see these arts are yeah. from different people to open it up to a lot of artists they can put out their uh, artworks and we'll pick a day they can speak about it so right now this is my fourth person that has uh, displayed their art but we've been just putting it on and people come and sees it and enjoys it and some of them are for sale most of them are not but that's another thing that you know it's amazing for people to know how to express themselves with art with music with poem and I want to give them this beautiful space to to do that and, you know I work 15 16 hours a day and I drive home and as exhausted as I am, I always have a smile on my face because I think back and say, wow, I was able to, do, you know, I'm lucky enough to live my dream. Yeah. And it looks yeah. like you have great staff too. They look I like really they're do. Very, yeah. They're very looks passionate like about coffee. Uh, they know coffee really well. And, and that was another thing, you know, just the universe just put us together. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Mimi. Um, we really enjoy listening to you today and um, it, it, it just you're very, very inspiring. Thank you. I really yeah. appreciate it. And thank you so much to yes. Paul also and for if helping me out today. <laughs> well, if I can just say so one last thing. At least I can thing. do for this incredible yeah. salary. <laughs> I, know, right? I just wanted to, to say, first of all, thank you for you know, you. doing this to support me and to put the word out there. And I also want to say thank you to all my customers, everyone in my life that's been very supportive uh, you know when this whole thing is happening most of my customers came in every day uh, told me that they will come and support as much as they can mm -hmm. as hard as it is for them to come out or to even spend the money that you know their hard-earned money um, to take a chance on me and, and my dream and you know um, people have come in and encouraged me to stay open and it's been incredible I can never pay everyone enough for their work, absolutely. Yeah. It's been really amazing. Oh, like it's, it's, a, it's really it's overwhelming. overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just overwhelmed with the love and support I've gotten from everyone in this community. Too. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Okay. It's my pleasure. That's it for today. If you, just like Mimi, are interested in participating in one of our future recordings, if you have questions or if you would like to share your adventure with us, please do contact me at bbonclody at gmail.com. Stay tuned for our next episode and always remember to love your life. Thanks, Mimi.